What's up ladies and gentlemen? So today we're just gonna look at some tools that I use, mostly free stuff, and uh, possibly look at some of the equipment that I use. So uh, yeah, let's, let's switch over to a different scene here so y'all can see my desktop. All right, so I've got multiple different tools that you actually can't see any of them down here, but I use, let's see, where should I start? Right, simply, I use, I use GIMP instead of uh, Photoshop for any of my photo manipulation needs. Uh, if I need to make, uh, like the thumbnail for this was, you know, that was basically GIMP. Uh, any of that stuff is GIMP. I don't use Photoshop, I'm, I'm cheap. I'm a cheap bastard, so I don't use Photoshop. I don't use anything that I have to pay for if I can avoid it. So uh, let's open up GIMP and just take a look at what it looks like. And it'll take a second. All right, all my toolbars loaded up. All right, this is GIMP. You know, it's super easy. You know, I can open up, let's say, uh, let's open up that one. I can open up a photo in here and do all kinds of stuff. Basically the exact same stuff that you can do within Photoshop. But it's free. Completely free. You don't have to worry about a watermark or anything like that either. It's completely 100% totally free. So there's or there's that. I use uh, OBS and Streamlabs OBS for my streaming. Let me just drag this over here so y'all can see it. Boom. That's what I use for streaming. It's, again, free. Although Streamlabs is one that you can subscribe to uh, for a monthly fee of, I think it's like 7 bucks or something like that. And you can get all kinds of extra stuff for it, but mostly it's free. Uh, let's see, uh, what else do I got? Uh, I use DaVinci Resolve. It's going to take a long time to open up with the computer being used, so I'm not going to open it up. But, again, completely free. I don't use uh, Premiere Pro or whatever all the other ones are I free free <laughs> so uh yeah there's resolve it's 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 more of a color grading and and video editing software but mostly color grading that's like really where it got its roots from but uh it's just as good as premiere pro it's just as good as any of the rest of them out there if not better in fact there's a, a lot of uh um movie companies out there that will strictly use DaVinci and, and DaVinci products, you know, DaVinci cameras and everything, Resolve cameras. Um, here's another free piece of software that I use that is just, uh, oh man, you, 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 you can't beat having this piece of software in your arsenal. You just absolutely can't. Let me open up and kind of show you all here. Um, Go in here and go to. I say DaVinci edits. All right, let's go to say just random one here. Okay, this is uh, the size and the file that comes out of DaVinci Resolve. It's a movie file and it's 2.47 gigabytes and it's you know just under six minutes long. Now if I take that and I drag it over here and I do some settings with it, I end up exporting it out of here as an mp4 that is 267 megabytes exact same video there's no quality loss or anything but you go from 2.47 gigabytes down to 267 megabytes absolutely ridiculous you you and again i have both of these in here just i, I really should delete this the larger one just to save space but i eventually get around to doing that i like to have them here you know, pretty much for this comparison to remind me handbrake is really 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 useful so uh i'll uh i'll throw say this one in here it's only 18 megabytes but i'll throw it in here just to kind of give you all an example of how it works you got all this normally what i start with is right here at presets and i'll go over to web down to youtube vimeo youtube high quality 1080p 60 so I'll click on that so it'll automatically do some settings. Uh, and then I go through these tabs right here just to make sure everything's right. And go through dimensions. Sometimes for whatever reason it'll have like 
some random thing go on there. So if you look at the, uh, well, I guess that didn't really work. Let's see preview. Yeah, it doesn't. You can't really tell here, but what it'll do is just throw the dimensions off for whatever reason. I don't know why, and it'll change us from like 1920 to something else. So just keep an eye on that. Make sure you know you set the width and the height, and make sure cropping is if it's automatic set it to custom and drop all of these to zero so you have your full video in there i don't know why it does it it does uh, then i go over filters i don't ever mess with anything there uh, video i will come right back to that one audio i don't really ever mess with anything here uh, sometimes you this will revert down to i think 112 and i 320 seems to work i i don't really know uh, subtitles, I don't mess with that, and chapters, I don't mess with that either. So the main ones are dimensions, making sure all of this, it's par one-to-one, -one, and going over to video. Okay, video, I don't mess with the codec, leave it as it is, H.264, X.264. There, there's a whole bunch of different options here, I don't mess with any of it. Don't even worry about it. What I do, though, is I click, sometimes I do same as source, because I believe this one is, uh, let me check real quick. I don't know if it's going to tell me in here how many frames per second. Yeah, okay, this one's 59.94 frames per second. And sometimes that may mess up if you're doing it at 60. So I'll just change the frame rate to same as source. Hey, Kat, Hannah, how you doing? Um, but I'll definitely I always switch it over to constant frame rate just so it's a constant 59.94, a constant 60, or a constant 30, whatever it is. Then, the big thing here, it's constant quality over here. You got RF. Don't ask me what that means, I have no clue. Uh, the only thing I know about how this works is I drag it from 20 RF. Well, I'm pointing at the screen like I can see it. I'm dragging it from 20 right here, RF, and I drag it down to 22. That's all I do. That's it. I make sure the frame rate is the same as source, constant frame rate, drop it down to 22 constant quality, 22 RF, whatever that means. Make sure my dimensions are all good here. And then what you want to do is you want to browse and make sure you've got it in the spot you want. That's not where I want it. Uh, recordings. No, not recordings. Uh, da Vinci, Da Vinci, Da Vinci, where is there is. All right, and then basically same thing that it was. Name it the same. Uh, animation, but then instead of .mov, set it to .mp4. The reason you want to set it as .mp4, even though it says right here it's going to save it as .mp4. If I just hit save right here, it's going to come down here and it's going to set it as an M4V. I don't know why it does it. I've had issues with it in the past of an M4V doesn't work, so. I always make sure whenever I'm saving it to add that .mp4 to the end of it. And you hit save and see it changes it to mp4. I don't know why it does it. I don't even know if an m4v or whatever is a, a equal to an mp4 or not. <laughs> no way. But then once you have all of that done, come up here and hit start in code. And hopefully that's not going to crash the stream or break my computer. I don't know. It didn't, didn't do much there. But it's going to go through. It's going to encode. Since this is a relatively short video, it should be fairly short for it to encode it. Hope it don't break the stream. But once that gets done, we'll look at the size difference here. So the original file is 18 megabytes exactly at 37 seconds. And this one, I'm going to another... Another five seconds left. This one's going to be not very much smaller because it seems that the larger file you have, two, three, four, five gigabytes, the more it scales it down. And then there it's done. You know, you can set it here. It says Q finished. You can set it when done, do nothing, shut down, hybrid. You can tell it to quit handbrake, but you can tell it to turn your computer off when it's done, which is kind of useful if you're doing a very, very large file. But we're going to close that, and let's look. Okay, our original file, the movie file, 18 megabytes, 37 seconds. And this one, MP4 file, 945 kilobytes, 37 seconds. So, 
I mean, that's 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 a fair amount. Again, it's not too terribly much for that small of a file, but the larger the file, the more that increases. It's crazy. So, yeah, handbrake is absolutely essential when you're making videos. Absolutely essential. So let's go ahead and look at uh, what I make games with. I bet you all like this one. So this is Unreal Engine. Let me just full screen it here. All right, this is Unreal Engine. This is or well, this is the Epic Games launcher or whatever. I mean, if you uh, go to home, let it load. You go up here to home, and you have, you know, all of your video games through the Epic Games Store. So it's it's like Steam, but there's a little more to it. You know, so you have the store. You can buy games. They give free games away all the time. In fact, these two, three games here are free right now. Well, this one's free right now. These are coming soon. Uh, then you got your library. And this is, again, all of your games within Unreal Engine. But then you come down here to Unreal Engine and go to that tab. Okay, and you got these multiple tabs up here. You got the homepage tab. You got the learn tab where they have all kinds of tutorials that you can follow on there. All kinds of stuff on how to use this engine. I mean, it's absolutely crazy. But the marketplace, the, again, free software. Unreal Engine is, is completely free for anyone to use. That wasn't always the case. There was a, like a $24 a month subscription fee back in 2014 to, I believe, 2016. Don't quote me on that. But there was a subscription for a while, and then they were like, you know what? If you love something, set it free. So now it's completely free for anyone to use, and... Epic Games and Unreal Engine, they are they are an amazing, amazing company. With all of the stuff that they're doing, all of the free stuff they're giving out to developers, uh, the incentives to to publish a game with them or to publish a game on their market or their their Unreal or their in Epic Games marketplace, uh, just all around, they're doing all kinds of good things for developers. Uh, let's look at their their permanently free content. They've got all kinds of stuff on here. I mean, everything you see right here is completely free. In fact, let's do, what, 100 per page? Yeah, let's do 100 per page. <coughs> Excuse me. But, yeah, there's all kinds of free stuff. Vegetation, you know, like, like just assets that you can drop right down into your game. Good to go, ready to go. You know, uh, uh, cell shader. You know, uh, so you can you can get a, a real nice, uh, a, a very unique look to your game, I should say. Uh, you've got grasses, you've got creatures that are all animated and ready to go. I mean, they, and, and all of this stuff that you see here, this isn't stuff that Epic Games is creating. Don't get me wrong. This is stuff that individuals are creating. You know, you've got the, this, I mean, not necessarily individuals. This one's like a team, dynamic or Project Nature. That's a team that's creating those. But then you've got like Jonathan Frederick here or T Games. or Like all of these are individuals or small groups of teams that are creating these, these assets that then Unreal Engine and Epic contact and they're like, hey, we want to put your stuff for free on the marketplace. The, the person that created the stuff, they still get paid. But... Epic's paying them now instead of, you know, I'm buying something from them and paying them. So it's it's just absolutely amazing what this company is doing for developers, whether they're developing games or just assets for games. And the thing is, is every month, every month they have new content. I haven't even gotten all of these yet. But all of these right here are completely free for the month. And then next month they'll have new stuff. And every month they also have new permanently free content. Uh... They also just recently bought this company called Megascans. I don't know if y'all have heard of them, but what Megascans does is they go out to real-world settings. They use this big, giant scanner that fits in the bed of a truck, and they go out and they scan the world. You know, they actually they get real scans of actual places in the world, and boom, you have all of this stuff here for free from Megascans because Epic bought them. And they're, they're constantly adding new stuff. They've got a dozen teams or so all across the world that are, you know, they go out every day and they take these scans just to give free assets for people now. It's just, uh, it's so amazing. Uh, Epic Games, they, it, when Fortnite came out, 
okay? And it started blowing up, and they started making a whole lot of money. Epic Games decided, well, there's a lot of money. That's our cash cow, Fortnite. Uh, we're going to basically stop production on all the other games that we're working on. And I'm not sure exactly what all they're working on. I do know they were working on this game called Paragon, which was a, a, a multiplayer online battle arena. It was really fun, had a lot of really, really cool assets in it. And uh, let me see if I can actually find some for you all. Uh, they were working on that game, and eventually they said, no, nah, we're going to stop that. We're going to focus all of our efforts on Fortnite. And basically all of the stuff that we created for Paragon and for some of our other games, we're just going to give that away for free on the marketplace. Like, uh, here's one right here. Uh, uh, which one was it? What was that? Uh, I forget exactly what it was from, but all kinds of free stuff. All kinds of free stuff. And y'all know how I feel about free. Free is good. Let's look, let's go full screen with this and get a look at what they got. Like, basically everything you see here, like these boards and these rocks and, and, and all of this stuff, completely free. Like, see, there, there's the assets and kind of what they look like in the engine. You know, you got this tree that you can just drag and place down into the world. You got these rocks that you can place in there. Uh, you got all these modular components down here, so you can take... See, there's the rocks. Uh, you can take, like, this wall right here, and you can mix it with all the other assets and modularly create a building. You know, you can take these stairs and all kinds of cool stuff. Yeah, I love free stuff. Free stuff is the way to go. All of this, free. Free, free, free. So, anytime you hear somebody saying that, oh, Epic Games, they, they oh, no, I don't like that, don't listen to them. Just don't, don't listen to that crap. Epic Games is absolutely amazing. Yeah, maybe, you know, a little biased, I guess, but still. And they also, they run sales all the time. Like, here, 50% off. Like, come on, you can't beat that. You know, it, Granted, a lot of this stuff is, you, you'd be like, oh, you only pay $60 for a game, but then you're paying, like, $250 for this one tool to be able to create, like, here, 55 actually $79.99, it's 30% off right now, 80 bucks just for assets to create a game. Yeah, that you, you may think, like, oh, that's a little much, but really it's not in the grand scheme of things. You know, you sell one copy of your game, two copies of your game, and you've paid off all those assets you know so assuming you're selling your game for 60 bucks so it's you know it's not really too much to ask for actually paying for something yeah actually paying for something within an real engine it's you know it's not bad but yeah i i i like unreal engine i you know like here's here's all the free assets i've gotten i've missed a few months of their free assets since they started doing it so yeah and then they have a few other things in here. Like this one's for, I believe, Archvis. Yeah, Architectural Visualization. And uh, I believe it's so you can import... Uh, yeah, you can import things from like Google SketchUp or whatever and like actual CAD drawings and bring that into Unreal Engine too. So it's pretty amazing. Yeah, Unreal Engine is not just for game design. Just so you all know, Unreal Engine is for game design, uh, architectural visualization, uh, movies... Like, there are some movies and film that not necessarily being fully produced with an Unreal Engine, but they're under, using Unreal Engine to enhance it, to, to help with the graphics and everything. Oh, yeah, it's, it, it's, it's absolutely amazing. I mean, it's not quite drag and drop, but it basically is. You know, it's... Uh, I'll, I'll do a stream one day, you know, hopefully, and show you all how Unreal Engine works and, you know, like, kind of the workflow of how to use it. But it's... It's fully, fully, fully featured. You know, like anything you can think of, you can probably do it with an Unreal Engine. So let's let's go ahead and close that out for now. Again, I'll I'll show y'all a little Unreal Engine later on. Uh, another one, another free uh, piece of software that I actually don't use all that much is Audacity. But you you really can't beat having Audacity on your system. Because, it, like, I don't know if y'all can hear right now. Let me be quiet. 
you'll hear like just a little bit of feedback there when you're recording your video because i have a we have a big ass ac that's on right now and you can't find anywhere in the house to get away from the sound so uh, if you're recording your video and you have a whole bunch of like background noise, just you know static going on in the background, you bring it in Audacity and you can remove that background noise super easily. Uh, again, I don't use it that often, so I'd have to Google it to figure out how to do it, but it's fairly easy. Oh, you can't hear the feedback? That's good. Because I see on my, uh, my little mic setting thing, there's a, a little bit whenever I'm being quiet. Yeah, yeah, game design is that it's absolutely digital construction. You know, it, in in fact, you can even go as far as to create a game completely modularly exactly like you would build a house. You know, you can you can create this wall and then you can put this wall up and put studs behind it and like you can you can pretty much do exactly what you do with real construction within it. Nice, no feedback. That is good. I know sometimes when I record uh I don't know if it's like the the USB cable from the mic is too close to the router or the modem or something, but sometimes you get like a little going on in the background, and I again, yeah, I, sometimes it happens, sometimes it don't. I have no clue why. Hey, <laughs> hearing the fans from your own PC. <laughs> Yeah, OBS is really good at picking up good sounds. But yeah, Audacity is really, really useful. So, let's see. What else do I have here? Uh, I have Discord. I mean, you know, it, I know, Matt, you know about Discord. But Discord is... I'm still kind of working on it. And it's, it's a little useful at times. But I was at one point trying to uh, set up like my own little community within here for uh game development and art and stuff like that no i don't want to update right now okay i'm just going to close that because it's going to try and give me problems but yeah you know about discord let's see what else do i have here yeah discord's nice discord's nice <laughs> yeah, if a Mars, m mouse farts in your room, the little ticker goes up. Yeah, it does. <laughs> I was using OBS the other day, and I just kind of, like, not, it didn't really make a sound. I just closed my lips and opened them back up and popped up real loud, almost up into the yellow. I was like, okay, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I know a couple of them. I just, like I said, I haven't really got into Discord all that much. Uh... What was it? Oh, this is a, this is a, a somewhat useful program, DroidCam. I don't know if y'all have heard about it. I don't want to open it up because it's going to try and do some stupid stuff. And but basically, what DroidCam is is you get DroidCam on your Android phone. I don't know if it works on iPhone or not. But you get DroidCam on your phone, and then you get the client on your uh, desktop. And basically, you can use your phone as a webcam. Which is, it's really interesting, it's just sometimes it doesn't really want to work with OBS or with Streamlabs. So I haven't, you know, I may use it later on whenever I'm doing some painting or something, but for the most part, eh, the wireless capabilities of it are okay. You know, you, you, you can tell that it's wireless at times because it just kind of cuts out. But uh, if you plug it up to your computer via USB cable, it's it's pretty damn clear it's you know you don't really have any kind of jittering or anything with that but if you don't have a webcam and you want to get you know or you have a crappy webcam and you want to kind of upgrade your webcam game you can use your phone if you have a really good camera on it and you can i believe set up as many devices as you want so you can actually set it up to uh work as like home surveillance you know, you can set it up to where it goes to an IP server and yada, yada, yada. You can have, you know, five or six different cameras. They're all just old smartphones you have. So it's it's pretty interesting to to have that in your arsenal, too. Like I said, I, don't, I haven't used it very much because it just, sometimes it gives me problems, sometimes it doesn't. Let's see, what else do I got in here? I don't use too much uh, cloud stuff for my, like, cloud storage. I just use Google Drive. I haven't been using Dropbox in a long time now. And I don't use any, you know, I have Office on here, but it's, you know, it's one of those where you open it up and it's like, oh, you got to pay for it now. No, I have Google Drive. 
I'll use Google Documents because you know what? You know what? I ain't even going to say it. <laughs> but yeah, that's that's basically all that I actually use for the most part is GIMP for photo manipulation, DaVinci Resolve 16 or 15 or whatever I can get my hands on, DaVinci Resolve for video editing, Handbrake for dropping those videos down to a reasonable size, uh, Unreal Engine and Epic Games for creating games and, and just yeah, anytime I want to like like visualize an idea that I have in my head, sometimes I'll jump into the, the editor and I'll you know, I'll create something to kind of go with it. By the way, this that you see in the background here was made with Unreal Engine. Uh, it was uh, using the uh, the Ark Dev Kit, and Ark is a game. Ark Survival Evolved. It's like Minecraft, but with dinosaurs and way better graphics. But uh, this was back in like I think 2015 or 2016 that I created this. So I mean, I didn't, I didn't like. I didn't build this tree right here. I didn't, you know, build this rock and design it within a, uh, uh, an, an editor, an art editor program. I just, you know, did the level design. I just took all the assets that were there, already packaged in there, and just built them to what I wanted it to be. Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll actually do a uh, another stream later on about how to really get into game design and game development in general. Because, again, it's it's something I'm passionate about. I, I love video games. I've been playing games my entire life. And I lately I've been trying to avoid all of the news about Final Fantasy VII Remake. Because I just... I want that game so bad. Like, I want to play that game so bad. I just haven't had the time to get my PS4 back here. and uh, But I want to play that game so bad. And all of the little headlines that I've read... While trying to avoid it, all those headlines are like, hey, it's a good game. They didn't mess up. All the other Final Fantasies are leading up to this. And I'm like, oh, thank God, because I want to play it. <laughs> Sega Genesis. I actually never owned a Sega. I owned pretty much all of the Nintendos. I owned, uh, I have every single one of the Playstations. Like, except for, like, the little, you know, like... 2.5 or whatever they like slimmed it down or you know the different versions of three and whatnot uh i didn't own a three or a, a, a original xbox but i owned a 360 and uh i have a couple of xbox ones oh i know yeah yeah they did a remake they did a remake final fantasy 7 remake the thing is is uh i don't know if you remember the game but the very beginning of it you start off in shinra and then eventually you get out of there and you go and meet Sid and, you know, you chocobos and everything. Uh, in this one, apparently, you never get out of Shinra because they're going to do it in, like, installments. At first, I was thinking it was going to be, like, uh, uh, the Telltale, or, uh, yeah, Telltale games, like the Walking Dead series and whatnot, where it's, like, uh, one little chapter and then you get to the end of that and you got to wait a month and the next chapter gets released. It's not quite going to be like that, but it's going to be, like, basically the, the 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 game that's out right now is just you're only in shinra and it's i don't remember like i said i've tried to avoid it but i think it's like something like 200 to 250 hours worth of gameplay just within shinra that's like the size of the entire game of the original final fantasy 7 so yeah it's i'm trying to avoid about it until i can actually buy the game and play the game but yeah, it's it's pretty amazing. Yeah, it had a lot of story that they like they seemed at one point to just kind of glaze over it, you know, and they're they're trying to get you out of there. But then again, this is back in the day when that game was what, three discs long? You know, so that was a lot of data to put on those. So it's yeah, I'd really want to play that game. Uh let's see, uh what else? I have well, right now I'm actually using uh uh, stream deck with my uh, OBS so that's that's how it looks you know you got these different buttons you can switch between scenes you can you know immediately mute your microphone I didn't actually say anything <laughs> uh, but I use my you know Samsung S10 plus I use that for doing a lot of my filming for my videos and everything uh, whoops Whoops. I use my Canon EOS M50 
to do uh, uh, the actual filming of my paintings, like the top-down film. Uh, yeah, it, did, it really did seem like they had to edit it for length. Uh, but I don't know if y'all see this. I've got some cellophane and uh, a little, I guess that's like a banana rubber band or whatever it's like a, it's a produce rubber band but i've got that put over my lens so that whenever i'm got i've got it top down and i'm filming my painting i have to worry about oh hey you'll just subscribe but i don't have to worry about you know any paint you know going up and getting on my lens and ruining my lens you know cellophane's easy enough to tear off and put some more on but uh then i have let me see if i can get this on the camera just right I have this little L bracket here that just, this screws up into, I got it on there pretty tight, but that screws up into the uh, uh, the tripod mount for the camera. And what I do is, actually, I set it down onto a board like this, clamp it down, and then it can film top down for whatever I want. I think I've actually flipped it around the way I use it on the uh, the outdoor mount when I'm actually painting is like that. So it just kind of sets down onto the board there. I've got a, a little wood clamp that I just clamp it down. Boom. Top down. Super simple. Super cheap. I don't have to have some kind of fancy top down camera rig or anything like that. I don't need to uh, use a tripod, which actually you can't really use a regular tripod to get top down unless you've got a very tall tripod. In my case, I don't really have that tall of a tripod. I mean, I've got this thing, but whenever you set it up and you're trying to film straight down from there, you're going to get one of those legs in the camera and it's just, it's not worth it. So cheap route, get you a little L bracket from Home Depot for like two, three bucks. You know, a screw little fit in there and a bolt to hold it on. And then I have, I think the way I have it is it's two one by 2s that come down. And then a one by 2 that meets in the middle. They're screwed in. They're screwed into the uh, the rafters on the underside of our porch. And that can then swivel and move up. So I can just swing it down, put my camera on it, clamp it onto it. Kind of, you know, adjust it a little bit to get everything in frame right. And boom, good to go. And then I'll take my phone and again... I'm cheap. I have two tripods. Well, my mom has two tripods that I'm borrowing on a permanent basis. But uh, I have an OtterBox here for my phone that I don't really use that often. It's too bulky. You know, I, I put my phone in my pocket and I just, I like the slimness of my S10 Plus. So what I did was I took some double-sided tape and I put an L bracket onto it. So again, what I can do is I can slip my phone into this. I can take my tripod here. And I can take and put that onto it. Because there's a hole in that L bracket. And then I've got a little nut right here. That I just put down onto that. Screw it into it. Bada bing, bada boom. Now I've got a tripod for my phone. perfect <laughs> I don't even have a green screen okay that's how cheap I am I actually asked my mom the other day I was like uh, do you have a green sheet anywhere and she was like uh, no no I don't think so I was like do you have a white sheet and some green dye I'm that cheap if we have it it works <laughs> <clears throat> but uh, yeah that's, that's mainly what I use for uh, recording my outside videos uh, I use my phone, yeah, bada bing, bada boom, but I use my phone uh, to get face cam, so I, I technically, I guess I use it like that, just so I can get face cam, but the main reason I use my phone is the audio is so, so much better, so much better than the Rode Video Mic Go or whatever that came with my camera. Uh, yes... It's wrapped in aluminum foil, and I will explain that. I found some video on the internet. Yeah, white sheets and green dye. <laughs> I found some video on the internet because this plugs into my camera. It's got a hot shoe mount right here, a cold shoe mount rather, that goes onto my camera. 
And every single time, except for like two or three times that I've used that camera and tried to record using this microphone, there is always that tick, 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 sound that I'm talking about. Always, no matter what, except for like two or three times, you know, so I guess no matter something. But uh, I found on the internet that one guy was saying that, oh, wrap it in aluminum foil, because what the problem is is well originally what they were saying the problem was is it's getting some kind of interference from wi-fi okay yeah that that's reasonable that makes some sense you know the, the camera is wi-fi you know so if i turn the wi-fi on that or turn the wi-fi off on that you know maybe it'll work okay it didn't maybe it's the wi-fi from the house you know signals flying around so i took this camera way out into our pasture where there ain't no wi-fi signals i checked with my phone and it still had that ticking sound so it bugged the crap out of me. <laughs> hey, white sheet and green dye, it may work. <laughs> I, it, it, send me a send me a picture if you do. I'd love to know if it works. But uh, so the guy was like, "Yeah, wrap it in tin foil, and that'll that'll help bounce those signals off of it." And I did, and it turns out that if you make a tin foil hat, it does not protect you from the re aliens reading your mind. Because, I mean, this didn't work to keep Wi-Fi out. What makes you think it's going to work for alien beams? Come on. So, yeah, I don't use this thing anymore. I just haven't gotten around to unwrapping it yet. Because I guess that makes a neat conversation piece, doesn't it? What the hell's that? So, I don't even use this thing as far as I'm concerned. It's it's uh, non-powered, you know. So, it, it it doesn't have its own power source. It doesn't have a battery in it. And that's one thing I've read about the, uh, the pro version of this mic. It has its own battery. It doesn't have to worry about interference with the camera and all that so you don't get that ticking but yeah i don't use this thing so i use my phone for a face cam when i'm doing my videos and mainly so i can get good crisp audio of me speaking but uh yeah that that microphone it's the uh video mic go it came with my camera you know so i, I didn't really have a choice there but it's garbage it is gar road Rode, R-H-O-D-E, video might go, Rode, your garbage, in that instance. But, yeah, uh, let's see, what else? Like I said, I have two two tripods. I've got this one, and then I've got another one that's probably three times the, the size of this one. Uh, that's about it. That's about all I got. Other than that, what I do is um, I play video games. And uh, lately, I've been playing uh, Final Fantasy XV with my mom. Like I said, I don't really have time to game, but I make time to, to play some games with my mom. But uh, yeah, we were, we were playing some of that, and that's a really good game. Uh, I've actually heard uh, some, or I've, I've seen those headlines about Final Fantasy VII Remake, and they're saying that uh, Final Fantasy XV was like, leading up to final fantasy 7 everything they got right in final fantasy 15 played into that one everything they got wrong with final fantasy 15 played into the new one so it's absolutely amazing oh yeah i've tried to my whole life make time to play with my mom play games with her it's you know it's kind of the you know it's what we do you know we have fun with it i've actually thought about uh if i can convince her to be on camera i've thought about doing a live stream doing some gaming with her but I don't know if that'll happen. You know, I'll I'll talk to her about it. But yeah, other than that, I'm I'm using a relatively you know non-powerful computer. Uh, it's a uh, let me see if I can bring up exactly what the computer is. How do I do this again? Is it in here? No, 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 no. Okay, so it's a, uh, that thing. <laughs> I'll tell her. <laughs> yeah, it's a HP Envy curved all in one 34 inch. And it's a, it's a very nice screen on it. But, I mean, i7-8700T at 2.4 gigahertz. It's a little underwhelming there. And then it's got a uh, NVIDIA GTX 1050. Like that's it, just 1050, no TI after it, you know, nothing like that, nothing fancy, it's just a 1050, and it, basically what it is, is it's a laptop that sits on your desk, like, 
That's, that's really all it is. It's the equivalent of a laptop. So it's not a super powerful computer, but I've got it right here in front of me, and then I've got a 24-inch uh, monitor sitting over here, and I've got a 36-inch uh, TV that I'm thinking about putting up here above where I have this monitor at, but I'm not going to be able to use it with this computer. I'm going to have to get another computer for that. So... Yeah, that's basically, that's that's the software I use, that's the equipment I use, it's, other than the equipment, everything I use is free. Yeah, I mean, if I can absolutely avoid paying for something, I will. I will. <laughs> so, when I found uh, DaVinci Resolve, I was like, yes, finally, some kind of a video editing software that I don't have to pay for that isn't iMovie or, I don't even know if they make Windows Movie Maker anymore. That I know I'm not going to use it if they do. But, yeah, it free, free, free. So, anytime I hear somebody say that, uh, oh, I can't, I can't do this because I can't afford the tools or whatever. Bullshit. I'm, I'm calling bullshit on you. There is a free equivalent of just about every piece of software out there. You know, that may not be true, but for the most part, you know, you've got GIMP, free version of Photoshop. You've got uh, Epic Games, Unreal Engine, and Unity, which are the free versions of, of Source Engine or basically any of the other engines that any other uh, game company uses. You know, you got CryEngine, which is what Crisis was made on. Back in the day, CryEngine was like top of the line. You could not get graphics that, that just equaled or even rivaled CryEngine. But, you know, you still have to pay for it. A lot of these other engines you have to pay for. So there's a free version of that. Handbrake, I don't know if there's a, a paid version. I'm sure there's some kind of a paid version for it. But you know, it's it's free. Completely free. And when I say free, I don't mean like you have to enter your email address or anything like that and sign up or anything, log in. No. Completely free. I think the only version of the uh, only piece of software here that I have that you actually have to sign into is... Uh, uh, Epic Games, the Unreal Engine launcher, you have to, you know, have an account with that. But uh, DaVinci Resolve, you have to, you have to sign up, but you don't have to worry about like remembering a login or anything like that. DaVinci Resolve is like, hey, what are you using our software for? And you're like, oh, I'm using it to make videos. And they're like, okay, thanks. Like that, that's really all the sign up is for that. You don't have to remember your email or anything, any of your password or anything. I don't even think you have to put in a password. It's just, hey, give us your email and tell us what you're using this for. And I don't even think I've ever gotten an email from them. You know, so it's it's not in, non-invasive like a lot of free or freeware programs are. Uh, but you, you, you just can't say nowadays that, oh, I can't afford to do this. I can't afford to be creative. Bullshit. There is all kinds of things you can do to be creative nowadays. And I think with that, I'm going to go ahead and call this stream there. It has... It's been fun. I'm surprised I've got a, a whole screen full over here of comments. Thank you all. Thank you, Hannah. Thank you, Matt. Thank you all for showing up. Uh, but yeah, I'll, I'm going to go ahead and call this. I'm going to uh, bring up my ending soon screen. And probably give that a couple of minutes to run. And maybe we can do some, some chat in the chat box. And yeah. So I hope you all had fun. I will see you all again. I don't know when I'm going to do another one. I may do another stream next weekend. But uh, yeah, I'll see you all then. You all take it easy. Boom. Transition. <laughs>